Now, listen, we are so excited for you joining us today. It is Freshwater Friday, Jess. Yes, love it. Wow, my another one of my second day of the favorite week. I don't know, it <laughs> might be my first. Wednesday's right up there, but Friday's head to head, man. They're both great know. days. We get to talk, fish, mm -hmm. water box, setting up tanks. Like, you can't go wrong with either day. Dude, it's a lot of fun. I'm telling you, we are super pumped to be with you guys today because we are going to start Alcascaping our 4820 clear series. Yay. We showed uh, that we debuted all our freshwater lineup uh, last week. And so we decided we're gonna take this four foot tank and we're gonna just start diving into it. Yeah, it's gonna be exciting to get this up and going, show um, mm -hmm. you know some little bit of different kind of scaping and stuff you can do in freshwater because it's not just uh, basic gravel and stuff anymore. There's a lot more out there for choices and this is gonna be a really nice, yes. um, Freshwater. Dirt. Dude, it's going to be awesome. Listen, we got a bunch of shout outs. We got all kinds of people hanging out Who's here hanging with us. Today? We got Michael, we got Jessica, Evan. Hello, we got hello. Fritz Aquatics up in the house hey, today. Hey, Fritz. Come on now. Listen, so we're going to be using the Fritz products on this tank. But of too. course. Of course, you know, some mm -hmm. water conditioners and different buffers and have you, uh, glass cleaners. So it's going to be really, really great. But we're going to dive into, actually, we should give a little shout out. Scott over at OSA Corals oh, yes. up in uh, Rhode Island has Hooked sent us. us uh, an awesome assortment of driftwood and plants to decorate this tank. He knows so, what he's doing. I've seen yeah. the ones in his store and the ones that he's done and set up and stuff. Beautiful. Like Scott definitely has a good, good eye. Beautiful. He picked out some really nice pieces really of wood nice. for us. So bam, there you go. Look at that. That's some so, of our stuff to work with today. That is the spider wood. Uh, really, really neat, unique shapes. Uh, he sent us a whole bunch. We have a bunch of different uh, uh, plastic and silk plants there mm -hmm. um, to choose from. And we're, we're going to go all in on this thing. So I, I think it's gonna be hot. let's let's not wait. I mean, let's let's go. Right. All we're right. going to put some sand in this thing, some gravel. Let's roll. Let's start it. Awesome. Awesome. So put it down. camera down. Oh, camera down. That's oh, OK. God. It's That's all right. No worries. No worries. We're still alive. Still alive. <laughs> all right. We're still alive. <laughs> Listen. So what happens when you're alive? This happens. So this is spider wood, guys, and I'm telling you, it's really, really interesting wood. I love the texture of it. I love it's kind of uh, more of a smooth, you know, like uh, texture to it. Nice coloration. Um, it's been kind of cut on one side, so you can get that nice flat base for it to sit on. Mm -hmm. um, really, really neat. You are going to have to waterlog it and weigh it down um, so it doesn't float up on you. Uh, so when we go to fill up the tank, we're going to have to put some rocks and stuff on it to help until they get saturated. Yeah, until it gets saturated to weigh it down. But these are ones, so. right, Dean, that do not discolor your water. Correct. So it's not yeah. going to release that color in your water. It's be brown, you're fighting that. I remember yeah. back when my freshwater days, like your tank was this yellow brown yes. for months. Changing water, changing water, carbon, yeah, yeah, yeah. and it's just like nonstop. So this isn't going to do it. Um, but yeah, this wood, like it is just 
such amazing shapes and just naturally gives you good height, super open areas, lots Love of room it. for fish and plants and stuff. Um, this is definitely the best type of wood to escape with. Dude, it makes gorgeous. it beautiful without that gorgeous. much work. Gorgeous. So, yeah, some it. really nice pieces and for then this. The substrate that we're going to be using, uh, Carib C hooked us up with these super naturals. We'll bring this up here so you guys can take a look. So, this is what we had talked about last week. Um, it's kind of like a uh, the coloration, very light, very tiny grain size on this. Um, really, really nice. Um, so, we're going to be using this in this tank. And I think it's going to complement the cabinet, you know? So, we should talk about the tank first for people are just joining us. If you've never seen the Freshwater Waterbox, yeah. If you Waterbox, haven't seen yeah. the Freshwater Clear series from Waterbox, super pumped on this. I mean, Starfire glass jets yep. across the whole thing, all even the bottom paint, everything is Starfire. And we used a clear silicone on this, on the edges. Beveled the, edges on the, the beveled glass. Beveled edges. Absolutely gorgeous. And also, the cabinet this is the oak color cabinet. Oh, that's really, open up for really it. nice. Oh, sorry. So then here's, uh, look at that. Plenty of room. We can go and stick our canister filter in here. We can put our Fritz products in here. We can put, you know, nets and what have you. Plenty cleaning of room supplies. for all your supplies to go in beautiful, there. Beautiful, beautiful cabinet. So. And this is our laminated hardwood cabinet. Yeah. So this is not MDF. This is true hardwood. It's going to last you forever. It's the same triple hinges on each door for better support. Soft close. Your, you know, recessed door poppers. Yeah. Dude, it's, it's so all nice. the high-end features. Um, that you get with the water box wow. cabinets on the fresh water wow. line. And the, yeah, we picked this color so it was going to contrast against the plants, the wood, and it's that be, cabinet yeah, really nicely. Fantastic. Also, guys, you're going to be able to see this tank uh, at Aquashella coming at in Dallas, Texas, uh, the end of next month. Uh, they're doing a huge aquascaping competition. It's going to be fantastic. The oh, big YouTube so much stars fun. are coming. So we're going to have two of these set up. So it's a side-by-side -side battle on the aquascaping competition. Yep. That's next month in Dallas. So we're going to be recording all that. But let's dive right in. Let's get Scissors. some sand into the tank. Actually, it's a gravel. I call it a sand, but it's a real fine gravel. Yeah, it's not um, fine sand. It would be considered gravel. But looking at it, it looks a bit like this, like sand. Yeah. So I love the setup process of uh, fresh water because you get to kind of play around with it. You're not so concerned about, you know, corals being out of the water or something like that. It's, you get to really move things around and, and, and make it look really nice. But look at that. Oh, man, I love that color. Yeah, ah. it's going to look really, really nice, especially wow. with the, of the wood. Come on now. Look at this. Come on now. Listen, I can get my little rake out here. <laughs> Put my little lines in here, like a little zen garden. You know, I mean, you can kind of look a little bit now. beachy. <laughs> really cool. So we're going to do about an inch and a half to two inch layer of gravel, um, I would assume, on this tank. We want to have it um, deep enough to be able to put that wood down and yep. the, you know, uh, the bases of the plant. So everything is kind of hidden and well secured in the substrate. Yeah. Um, I mean, you could go really, really thin if you wanted to with fresh water. It's not like a necessary thing mm -hmm. if you're not doing live plants. Uh, but I think this is going to work better and look better in that little bit deeper sand, bed. Yeah. or not sand, but gravel bed. Gravel bed. So, very, very cool. And I'm telling you, this thing's going to come together so quick, and it's just going to look fantastic. I mean, fantastic. You know, long are the gone are the days of, um, you know, the crazy fluorescent color plants and what have you. I mean, they're still very popular. You know, put a SpongeBob <laughs> ornament in here. You could do that. But we're going to try and take this up a notch, right? To make it real decorative. Uh, more like an artistic approach, I would call it, to it the freshwater. Part, the freshwater side of this uh, hobby has really become extremely Hot. advanced as far as just like the options for plants and, and wood, the different substrates that are out there, and then also just the looks that people are getting with their tanks um, is just unbelievable. Like, you know, 10, 12 years ago, the freshwater side was just so basic in comparison. Yep. Love that, that. You can do so much now. So. Also, another great feature you can see, Jess, is she's able to not use a ladder and she can reach the bottom of the tank. And I'm short. A little short, but that's okay. <laughs> so what happens is you know, the, the tank is designed with the cabin height and what have you so that you can easily maintain the aquarium um, without, you know, big canopies and, and different stuff and ladders to get into it. It's really easily accessible. And same with the cabinet. It's designed to have very open areas in the cabinet. Easy maintenance, easy yep. storing of stuff. 
Um, you know, the, that's really what water boxes. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Oh. Now look at the color there. You see how the color separation from the, the oak to that? I mean, it really stands out. Love that. Now let's use this wood. We got some spider wood here. I think you're gonna. We're gonna think in this one was going to be like our centerpiece, just because it's got a really nice open um, shape to it, but it's also not as, not as tall, so we can kind of give it some height around it with some plants. All right, now if we need to add more sand or gravel, you know, we can, um, different woods. I mean, look at that. Oh my goodness. Dude, this is sick. It's, it's an art form, just like uh, aquascaping is over with salt water. Like, there's definitely... I mean, it's already turning into this... Dude, this you can see very quickly how, how it just starts coming together. I mean, it's really impressive. Real impressive. Guys, if you have any comments, questions, concerns, you know, uh, put it here. Me, uh, I got some comments here. Um, Let's see. Evan says the cabinet matches my floors. I think they'll use that on my next reef tank. Um, Jessica says can't wait. We got some YouTube fans. Where's Rich? Well, Rich is out today. He wasn't feeling too well. So um, he is staying home, but he is watching the stream. So if you want to comment to Rich, he is he's there. Uh, Robert asks, are under gravel filters used in planted tanks? No. No. No, you're so, going to find canisters used there. Undergravel filters aren't really used much anymore in general. Mm -hmm. um, if they are, it's going to be kind of more of a basic freshwater setup. Definitely not with plants because mm -hmm. that would actually be pulling on the roots of the plants and you can't have that pull um, and everything going through the substrate. Correct. So undergravel filters, mm, kind of on the wayside as far as freshwater. Yeah. Canisters tend to be the most Canisters or a coming. hang on the back filter is what... Yep. Uh, now, we're going to use a canister filter on this setup. Um, it, it goes underneath... Uh, we just bring the, the tubes up, real clean look. You could also have one that just kind of mounts on the back if you wanted yeah. um, as an option. Some, some advanced guys might want to drill the tank. Hey, man, that's up to you. But, <laughs> <laughs> it, you know, so, um, but really great. So now, Jess, we got these plants. Now look at these plants. These are not your typical plants. Um, some really nice, different... Beautiful, yes, see the different textures we got here? A lot of grasses. Um, even a little pops of color, you know, on, on something like this. Um, really, really interesting, really neat. So let's go get started, right? Let's yeah, get some so you, we want to have a variety of your plants when you're doing this to have mm -hmm. different textures and kind of structure heights and, you know, shapes of the actual leaves and stuff because you want mm -hmm. that contrast. And if it was all the same, I'm, it would just not be quite as um, exciting. Correct. So we have, I think these are going to be really cool. I'm actually really excited about these. Those. These are super nice, tall. Um, mm -hmm. And we're going to use those for kind of filling in the background a little bit. Okay. And these actually are going to probably stick out of the water, Ooh, out of the tank. Hot. Hot. It's going to look really cool. Hot. Um, so the wood's in place. Okay. Um, lots of nice open area mm -hmm. for our schooling fish and stuff when we do. But tons of swimming space and little places to tuck. The, we're going to have some rocks in here. Uh, and the plants, so I think it's going to look pretty cool that way. Like I said, once you get it kind of filled, it's basically what we have to do is figure out like how to get them to stay in place. We still have to get our rocks, which I think yeah. will help a bit. But something like this, I mean, so you know, you got to just kind of think out of the box a little bit, you know, of how they it goes in. And we may need to make it a little bit deeper on, on some of the, um, the gravel bed, you know? Yeah, and just like a, a piece of rock or two towards the back that will hold up some of your pieces that are a little bit taller um, will be probably in use as well. That's going to be probably a, oh. a secondary step is to throw some of those rock in there. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I said I like the grasses. I think the grasses are really neat looking. You know, they're really just cool. It's like a variegated um, leaf on it, but very, very interesting. So I said, well, we could literally just stick these in here. We might have to make this grab a little bit uh, deeper. Yeah, I'm also doing it when there's no water in there. So right. there's going to be a little bit of room for kind of Another changing it up or the way that they sit a bit differently once there's actually water in here. Just like that. 
So it could be really kind of cool when this thing comes together. And if we need more plants, we can go get some more plants. It's, you know, and you can play around with it, guys. You know, so it doesn't have to be, um, here's another one, really interesting stuff. And then... Uh, yeah, because probably what we're doing here is not going to be the final. It's kind of yeah. like, you know, anytime you move something, you start looking at it, you're like, no, that doesn't look as even. I'm probably going to have to cut these, Jess, I think. Yeah. To get these to sit down where we want them to. Yeah, and that's... So, we'll just kind of throw them in and we'll have to probably cut, cut them down them. in maybe smaller individual stalks. Yeah. Just I so can do that. that. Well, you get the other plants, I'll start trimming these up a little bit. Yeah, they're just not quite fitting into our idea nearly as well. A little bit too tall. Yes, yes. Come on now. Listen, it's Friday, guys. Pumped up. So in general, usually your shot more uh, shallow plants are going to be towards the front and taller to the back. You can always give, you know, some taller ones up the side. It really mm -hmm. just depends on what you have envisioned and also um, the type of fish you're going to keep in there too because some of them are going to be a little bit more as far as like ducking around and hiding. That looks better. There you go, something like that. Um, that? Some are going to be more ducking and hiding. Other ones are going to want some of that open space if you're going to have a lot mm -hmm. of like little quarry cats. Um, there's like loaches and things that stay on the bottom that you probably want to leave a little bit more open for. Dude, this is going to be... Epic, guys, look at this, epic, I'm telling you. We're doing live aquascaping on Facebook and YouTube. Come on now. <laughs> Who else is doing this? Not many. I say it turns out pretty nice when we're doing it on a... Look at that. Oh, my goodness, Jess. Dude, I wish Rich was here. He'd be going crazy right now. Love this. Okay, we got to get a splash of color, too, in here. Yeah, we've I got a I... couple pieces that have, like... Some little bit of like those highlights of pink and red in them. And I do like, like you said, you get, when you get a little bit of height up on the back, you know. It really brings the depth into there because um, mm -hmm. once it's filled and the fish are moving around, it gives gives it a, a feeling of being a little bit more realistic. Yep. And you know, having that depth perception as well. I mean, these are nice deep tanks, though. So that's the good thing with the the freshwater line is that we have made them a nice width, so you can do a lot of. Mm -hmm. Uh, space in here and it's not a very narrow setup which is good. Dude, look at that. That's already coming together unbelievably guys. Let me hop on to some of these comments here. Um, Scott says bend them. Yes you can bend them. Uh, if you bend the bottom of the plants they'll fit in a little bit better. That's Great. So you could bend them kind of under yeah. the wood or the rocks or however you wanted to. Yeah Rob wants to know did I have my aminos today? Yes I did Rob I'm telling you I am chugged how many ounces? 32 ounces of that stuff. Come on now. I'm taking his advice. I'm bending the bottom of one of these. Neal says fake plants. Yes, this is, actually we're doing a decorative freshwater scape on this tank. So um, we are going to do another build uh, coming up. We're going to do live plants with CO2, um, the whole nine yards. But today we're doing a decorative freshwater. We're trying to say is easy maintenance on this thing. Mm -hmm. Easy to, it's going to look fantastic. The fish we're going to put in here are just going to be gorgeous. Um, Evan says they sell clip-on weights for the plants and grass. Um, good idea. Definitely yep. a good idea there. You, uh, Evan says you could also glue the plants and grasses to the wood. Yes, you could. So there's different ways to do it. Um, as I said, we're just kind of live on the fly here. And that's what you find. Like I said, we're putting this together now, but what yep. we're actually going to end up moving stuff around and doing with it is exactly. going to be who knows when we look at it and kind of, you know, judge and decide on that one. But you can already tell, like, man, this is a very interesting decorative scape for your home. I mean, or, you know, or our office. I mean, this is a beautiful, beautiful tank. And you can imagine if we get a schooling fish in here, right? Let's get a bunch of, uh, you know, ra uh, rainbow fish. We could put some tetras in there. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and I think like a couple more of these tall pieces in the back, maybe a, lot, a little bit in the middle as we mm -hmm. cut them. Yep. Um, we'll fill that in really nicely. And then it's kind of centering the plants around each uh, piece of spider wood and allowing actually a lot of swim through space and stuff around them. I think it turned out really, really nice actually. Dude, super, super nice. And this is so. with like no pre-thought or anything. We're just going with it. Taking Dude, this plants is, we're just winging it, Jess. Winging it. And here's, it's just like that fast moving. Here's some more uh, 
grass if you want. Yeah, just to bring a little bit of more height on there. Height into this one. I said, just you know, be. Uh, just be. Have fun with it. F yeah, have fun with it, guys. I mean, this is part of the joy of aquascaping and aquarium keeping. It's I promise your fish won't judge you on how you make their house. So. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, man, this is a mansion. Your fish will not judge you if you want to make it one way or any. Straight up mansion. Yeah, we'll have to actually probably. I've got one more here. But, oh my goodness, look at this. Hot. Come on now, listen. This is straight up next level stuff, everybody. We ain't fooling around. Look at that. That's gorgeous. Oh, this this one is saying, this one's saying no to my choice of no. spot. That's, That's right. okay. No worries. We're almost done here, guys. Aha! Almost done. Yeah, and then we'll still have some of these that are actually going to be sticking up above the water line. Oh, man, dude. That's hot, Jess. I think we found like one or two more plants. Um, that have a little bit of that red splash to it. Yeah, yep. I'm gonna have to get really a little nice. bit more of the pop of red in there. But man, Scott picked out some awesome spiderwood for us on this thing. He did, good. Hot, so hot. I love it, I love it. I say wow. it's done. I, dude, I totally agree. Look at that. I love it. Bam. Man, honestly, okay, I've Dude, had... drop the mic right now, because I'm telling you, <laughs> you just killed it, Jess. I, I haven't mean, that had is awesome. a, I haven't had a, like a good freshwater tank, personally, in quite a few years. Mm -hmm. It's always been salt water. And I gotta say, now with this spider wood that's available, Dude, and this nice beautiful. variety of plants that's really easy to work with, um, like, I told you to do it again. Yeah. Dude, it's I'm beautiful. telling you, this is fantastic. So, uh, Evan says he'd fill that tank up with angels and discus, maybe a small Plago clown loach or two. I was voting clown loach uh, earlier. They're yeah, one of my that's favorites. That's one of Jess's favorites, the clown loach. But, man, look at that. I mean, that is really, really nice, guys. It was, I mean, what are we at? It probably took us like 10, Dude, 15 minutes between yeah, rocks and 15 things. minutes, and we just aquascaped an entire four foot aquarium. And that's the thing, is like a lot of people, I think, when they think freshwater, they're thinking of what they see at your general stores or like the, the basic, those cheap plastic plants you see, the ones that have the mm -hmm. way too bright colors. They're not realistic, they're not real plants. Um, you know, and then the big rocky gravel or different colors. Correct. And that's not what freshwater really is anymore. That's yeah, it's gotten yeah. so far from that that it's just like such beautiful, yeah. you know, high hardscapes and really nice Absolutely. artificial plants and stuff. Now, Absolutely. So. Uh, Rob says, "Man, you guys did that in ten minutes. What? The setup looks great. <gasps> Come on now. Listen. I think it's really cool. I'm Listen. really happy with that. Awesome. Awesome. Now it's time for brrr, fish, fish of, of the, the week. week, everybody. And let's see what we have as fish of the week. Bam! Look at that. <laughs> Come on now, Bosmani rainbow fish. Do you love the rainbows? Dude, this I think is they a might be a contender for this. Uh, beautiful fish. Build. Wow, I love the coloration on this fish. Love the shape of the fish. Um, I said 30 plus gallons minimum tank size for this guy. Um, they do school. Yes. It would be a perfect fish for this four foot tank that we're be. doing. Yes. Um, and it's. It needs about a four foot tank or bigger. They do, even yeah. though they say 30 gallons or larger. Like 30 is if you had the baby ones right. and you're kind of growing. But they do need a lot of swimming space. They're very active, open water, mm -hmm. um, and a group of them. And, you know, there's Beautiful. a lot of other types of rainbows, too. The Bosmani is one of the nicest with that bright orange. Yep. Um, but you do want that longer tank and a group of them. So, mm -hmm. I mean, they're, they're going to be about four inches you know, big four inch ones. Yeah, so no, absolutely. it's not a small, small fish. Dude, I'm telling you, it looks fantastic. Evan says, now I'm thinking about turning a 30 gallon. He goes, you guys are making me want to start a new 30 gallon freshwater tank. It's inspiring. Come it on, is man. just Listen, inspiring. Even if you have a saltwater tank, man, I challenge you to do freshwater. You'll, f you'll feel the love of freshwater again. I know some, some people have, I'm only saltwater. Listen, I'm telling you that freshwater uh, market is really, you can enjoy yeah. it. And there's so many, there are so many fish out there in freshwater that are so bright and oh, colorful. Yeah. You know, we're, you know, do even a doing community. People are like, oh, mm -hmm. community, that's just boring. Tetras, there's so much yeah. cool stuff. Dude, I'm telling you, the, the fish are having babies, and next thing you know, the tank is just, I mean, it's taking off like crazy. It's going to be super awesome. So I think we're 
going to convert a lot of people I think from so. the saltwater world so. that have sworn off yeah. fresh with this yeah. build. I think. Or so. if somebody's like, listen, I'm still a little in intimidated about the saltwater. I don't want to go all the way in there. Hey, you can have a beautiful freshwater tank from Waterbox Aquariums water box, yeah. and, 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 and get your feet wet. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> bing, bing. <laughs> so uh, once again, guys, we appreciate everybody joining us today. Now, also, we're going to move this tank, Jess. We're going to move it into our freshwater studio yeah. that we're uh, setting up. And we're going to be, next week, we're going to be talking about the lighting mm -hmm. uh, that we're going to be put on, on this thing. We're going to fill it with water. We got filtration. We got lots to do. Yeah. Lots we have to a cover. lot to do. So this tank, will, you're going to watch it morph into this full, complete running system. Yep. Um, and we really appreciate it, guys. But thank you so much for tuning in. We will see you on Wednesday, Wednesday and Friday. Listen, I'm telling you all, come on now. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks.